The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! Yeah! Let's go, baby! Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. Hey guys, welcome back to Cowboys Break. I'm Amber Garcia. You heard in the intro who else is the cast on this show. We got Nick, David, Derek over here. This is season 18. Yeah, we're legal. 18? Wow. Mm. 18 seasons. What? What's wrong with that? We're legal. For okay. adults. Um, okay. That just doesn't That's a different right. kind of legal. It just doesn't what? seem right. I'm just going to punt on that. I just don't <laughs> want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> You're legal to go to the military. You can sure, join sure. the army vote. at 18. You, you vote. can vote there you go. for yeah. the country. Go to war. You're legally and... an adult. You can All right. All right. Episode four? Five. Five. Mm. Okay, you were right. wrong, Nick. Okay. Okay. Woo! Okay. So. Wow. I got, I got <laughs> five right. on it. There you go. <laughs> this is like one of those flights where the turbulence starts the minute you get <laughs> we'll off the ground. We'll change it up. I'll. I have some more turbulence for you though. Okay. Um, we do have the draft coming up around the corner. Sure do. And we have things to talk about, but before we get into that, I figure we'll get the news. Out of the way. I mean, some pretty serious big news, oh, but right. we do have to talk about it. <laughs> oh, right. Well, it's fun. Like when you're in the weekly format, you know, it's, so much has been said already about that situation. You forget we haven't had a show since then. We yeah. have not. So we do kind of, I figure we do have to kind of discuss it a little bit. Unfortunately, we do. Pretty yeah. serious, major stuff. But I'm sure by now, a lot of the listeners have already heard the news and the things that's going on currently with Kelvin Joseph, which we did discuss last week as, you know, a quick evaluation of how he was drafted and how he was looking and all that. But he's currently going under some uh, pretty serious investigation. Uh, as of right now, we don't have a lot of the details. We've heard some things around the media and things like that. But, I mean, it's involving... A homicide that happened in DFW. So he's currently being investigated by the police. But I guess I'm gonna just leave yeah, it open well. to you guys on what's going on with him and what this means for the team. And if the Cowboys are expected to make any kind of move right now, I know maybe you're waiting on what happens legally. Yeah, but I think that's that's the issue. It's just what happens uh, legally. That's what Stephen Jones he, he talked. A lot less about it, honestly, than you just did. I mean, and, and I say that because he's not trying to talk about it a lot right now. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and they I'm not saying hide behind the legal part of it because that's that's the, that's what it is. You just don't have you, you you open yourself up for more issues when you when you try to talk you know about something that we don't really know. We know this; it's being investigated. We also know that he was he's continuing to do the things f- for the team. That he's supposed to do. He's part of the uh, off-season workouts. He was, he's here. Um, I don't know if he's been here every day. They don't take attendance like that. They don't share the attendance. It's voluntary for us. It's voluntary. What do voluntary uh, mean? It means you means you show up if you're if you're in, in the in the news for the wrong reasons. You better show up. That's usually what it means. I, I would think. But um, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens and whether it changes any kind of off-season draft strategy. Let me say real quick, though, we do have to acknowledge, I want to acknowledge, sure. there was a person that died here, and I know sometimes you can get caught up in the conversation mm-hmm. talking about football, but this man, Cameron Ray, is, is no longer living because of what happened that night, and regardless of what Kelvin Joseph's involvement is in that or not, uh, a man is still dead, and so we want to, you know, obviously his, his family, you know, you, you have thoughts for them and, and, and you know, want to make sure they're okay, but at the end of the day, Football takes a back a back seat to this because there's a man that's dead. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, that's I mean it, that's a that's a weird situation even as far as that stuff goes because like the information that we have, I mean the information that his lawyer was willing to share is like he was there that night. We know that he mm-hmm. was there, didn't come to light for a month, and then he talks to the Dallas police. Don't want to infer, infer too much from that, but two arrests were made within two days of that conversation happening. Have a feeling that's not a coincidence. Um, 
hasn't been charged with a crime. And he maintains that he was not in any way sh- the shooter. He is not. He right. did not shoot anyone. That's what he maintains, or his attorney has maintained. And there, there have been no charges. There have been. There's been no arrest. I completely understand the point of view of anybody that's like, oh, it still sounds pretty gross. All things, if you just take the totality of it, again, this comes to to light a month later. I understand if you still have some misgivings about what's going on there. But to the point Nick just kind of made is the Cowboys are going to wait and see how this plays out. Are there, is there going to be legal actions toward Kelvin? Is there going to be uh, NFL disciplinary action? We have no idea about that either. Um, and it's ironic. And, I, yeah, you're so right. I mean, it feels gross to even talk about stuff like the draft when somebody was killed. But the fact that it happens a week before the draft just throws all of that into further light where it's like, well, do we need to be thinking about this when we're in the war room trying to figure out what we need to do with our picks on Thursday and Friday? Um, Well, and that was going to be my next question. Two-part question, really. One is, regardless of the legal outcome of the situation, the fact that his name is tied to something as severe as this, do you expect or think that the Cowboys will make some kind of move there or and and the second part sorry is like Dave said and you mentioned also Nick how does that affect the draft and what you start looking at as far as the position itself yeah if you would have asked me a week ago that that very question about Kelvin Joseph my answer would not change I don't think he's done anything on the field to let you say that Oh, we don't have to draft a corner because we got him. Um, when you look at the position, just a little bit more uncertainty for the future comes out. Um, you know what 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 happens with Anthony Brown next year? His contract is up. Um, I believe Jordan Lewis still has another year, but it's a year they could get out of if if they they wanted to. And then of course Kelvin Joseph's. You know he hasn't proven anything yet on the field, so. You know, I think if you, there's a good corner that you wanted to take, you would take him regardless of this situation. Either way, because, you know, you always need good corners, especially in the future. It looks a little uncertain. Yeah, and I'll say this, too. I mean, it, and I'm just speaking for myself. This is not the organization's take. I don't know what their take is on this. But me personally, reading the things that I read about Kelvin Joseph coming in the door when the Cowboys drafted him, I was already a bit skeptical mm-hmm. of, like, the who he was off the field. And remind and, the people, aside from the rap. And it, no, it wasn't even that. Like, I, I have no problem with guys having a life outside of football. That doesn't bother me at all. It was the fact that he was at LSU, and then he wasn't. The issues. He was at Kentucky, and they were like, yeah, we're good. You kind of just go on and do your thing, right? It Just the fact that there, was, there seemed to be this cloud of just like, man, this guy, I don't know. You know, and, and so – I'm not saying, like, I, again, I don't have a problem with a guy that has a rap career. I don't have a problem with a guy that has other interests outside of football. I just thought that when he when he was first drafted, I had a little bit of skepticism. And Nick's even talked about on this show, like, and you've made reference to it. I don't know how many fans picked up on it, but, Nick, you've used the, the term. I'm more concerned about, like, what does he do in these months? Like, that's going to tell me a lot about jo- Kelvin Joseph talking about the offseason. I know what you're getting at. It's like when you're away from football – are you doing the things that you need to be doing to be ready mm-hmm. to play and available to play when football comes back around? And so I think there's a level of skepticism in my mind. I don't know how the organization feels about that. I wonder if this advances that or not, how they view it and how they viewed him coming in the door. Were they also like, hey, you know how they do with second round picks? This guy has a lot of talent. We'll take a little bit of a chance on him and 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 we'll just kind of see where we go. I really don't know if the organization or how they feel about feel, felt about him coming in and how that much how much that has changed after this incident. That's the disappointing thing. And I, 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 ironically, I said this last week about a cornerback, Jordan Lewis. We were talking about you know he came in with with the mm-hmm. domestic violence issues, and and that seems so crazy. And at the same time, we don't know these guys, right? Yeah. Um, at least not as well, not well enough to just make these concrete statements about who they are as people. Um, Kelvin was a unique circumstance because of my ties to LSU. Like I had many conversations with people who know him a hell of a lot better than I did. And the word back that I always got was like, he is a good kid. His sense of priorities and his penchant for getting wrapped up in the wrong things yes they speak for himself themselves like he went mia from lsu's program 
in the spring of like 18 or I think 28, 2018 or 2019, he just like disappeared and just stuff like that. And again, I don't want to speak out of turn about what happened at this nightclub, but the details that we have make it sound like he got caught up in the wrong crowd and the wrong situation. And again, what we keep hearing is like he did not fire a gun. He did not do that. But you were there. Your decisions led you to this point. You allowed yourself to get caught up in that. And it speaks to that idea of like maybe you are not a bad person. But uh, your critical thinking and your your judgment and and all of that stuff can be very fairly called into question. Yeah. And uh, it's not what. And you that's did. fair. Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely fair. Yeah, that's the thing. Like you, we, the, Kyle was just saying, we're looking. You know, we're f- further investigation, and you can we can keep investigating this all you want to. But facts remain. This is that it's not what you did; it's what you did not do. That's that's a, that's not debatable. You were there, and you didn't call. You didn't you didn't let anybody know for for. A Almost a, a month. That is a problem. Your decision making is that that's an issue. That's always going to be there. So, you know, I, I, let me just say one more thing too. There are people. I'm sure fans are like, "Ah, just get rid of them." There are people I think in this building that think that way as well. But who knows where you know the real decision makers what they think? And I'll say this: just because it hasn't happened right now doesn't mean it will not. I think it's it's important for the Cowboys to figure out the entire story, mm-hmm. see where where things are going from there. But I, I don't think it's well. If he hasn't been released, he won't be. I don't think that's true. But I don't. My gut tells me that probably won't happen. Yeah, that's just what I think. I, I don't think he will. But I lean toward that too. But yeah, that's it. Just feels like a weird limbo where we really probably haven't seen the end of this story, and it could go either way. Which. I, I don't know. I'm not going to get up on the table and proclaim what they should or shouldn't do. But like I said at the top, like I don't blame anybody that is sitting at home like, eh, even if I don't have all the facts, like it sounds like this guy sat on this for a month and that feels gross to me. Yeah. I don't blame you if you feel that way at all. I just hope that he learns a lesson that my dad used to tell me when I was a kid, which is you are always going to be judged by the people you hang around. So be thoughtful about who you hang around, because even if you don't do anything, let's say assume he did nothing wrong let's say in this situation fact is he's still not wrapped up in it because of the character of the people that were with him so hopefully he learns that lesson and and this is a good life lesson for him regardless of what happens with the case regardless of what happens with the cowboys hopefully it's a good life lesson for him to know you know i might i might need to choose better people to run with you know if i'm going to be out and about i need to choose people that i think represent the same kind of values that i represent and that's a tough thing because it's not only what you do with your personal friends and who you hang out outside of work, but you he's surrounded by people here, and people here are going to be surrounded by him. Mm-hmm. So it's also that does impact mm-hmm. your locker room, your group, your defensive backs. So you want to ensure that you have those tight groups, but make it the right kind of tight group, you know, yeah. the right people around yourself. We're going to take an early break. When we come back, I want to start getting into the draft and some of the positions of needs for the Dallas Cowboys. At at and everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. The Cowboys way. Where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. 
Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. Back to the break. If you want to see better, go to Essler. Uh, you can book an appointment at your local Essler experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more, do more, Essler. Welcome back to the break. I do not want us to sound like a broken record on this show, but I have to say it. I'm still kind of amazed, surprised, and with my eyes open and scratching my head at the fact that you haven't brought some free agency help into the building Mm -hmm. to kind of add some depth, some experience, specifically talking about the O-line, and more specifically talking the guard position of the Dallas Cowboys. We know that you want to go into the draft with some kind of depth in there so that you're not necessarily forced to grab a position because you really, really need it. So I want to open up the questions to to you guys. And, and Stephen Jones was talking about to the media, and one of the things that he mentioned when he was asked about a guard, he referenced um, Zach Martin. And like, yeah, we'd love to have a guy like Zach Martin, <laughs> Zach Martin on the team, which yeah. is great. Yeah. But yeah, not anytime, that you easy. Can have, anytime you can find a Hall of Famer, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's good business. <laughs> great business. So, but it, it's not that easy. So I just want to talk about and ask you guys, like, what the heck? Yeah. What, what the heck? Where That's are we question. right what now? The heck? What the heck with the guard position? This is not a real surprise when you think about it. Like, what the guard market is is not what the Cowboys like. Like, they want Zach Martin. Cool. Good good approach. But <laughs> the guy that they pushed with two hands out the door got a $7 million a year contract. So anybody else that's a, that's been pushed out the door by their respective teams is probably wanting something like that. And they're like, no, we that's not what we want to pay. They want a bargain shop. But Connor Williams is making $7 million a year. Mm-hmm. So... It, it, it's, it doesn't make it, it – I mean, this is not surprising that they don't like what's out there because they want it cheaper, and, and those guys are like, well, I'm better than him. I find it very surprising. I disagree because – No, I, I am surprised too, but, like, who who do you think they should sign? They clearly I mean, don't want the guys that are out there because – They've never stopped – they've never let the fact that a guy's not good stop them from signing somebody in free agency. Like, that's what they do. They scrape mm-hmm. the bottom of the barrel and say, well, at least this guy has played. Ty Inseki was not in high demand last yeah. year. Neither was – um. I can never remember the dude's name. The swing tackle before Cam? Ty. Cam Irving. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, Shout out to the bro. Yeah, like they they've never failed to find a nine hundred thousand dollar vet that they can come. They're like, hey, he's not actually good, but at least he's played in the NFL. <laughs> Who are they actually saying that to when they go home? Okay. Among that themselves, good. okay. <laughs> but like, let's say that they get that guy, the, the, whoever he is. They signed him. They signed him last week, and then they draft the corner, the the guard in the first round. Like, then what do you do with that guy? Cut him. Swing He's your death. swing guard center yeah. or or you cut him. Yeah. I mean, you, you decide whether you want him you or say, McGovern to be your, your, we go your, to, your backup. We right. go to camp with Kenyon Green, this old guy, uh Connor McGovern, yeah. and Matt exactly. Farniak. Yeah. I bet you And I we bet, cut whoever sucks the I most. I bet yeah. you just sign that guy after the draft. No, and that's I agree with you. I want to be like I agree with what you're saying. I just find it shocking because it is a noticeable departure from what they usually do. And that's I spent two weeks saying like, well, you know they're not done because they haven't they haven't added the guy who sucks. That's yeah. what they do. They go get the guy that sucks and then they sell us on him for a few weeks and then they draft the new guy. That's what they do. If for nothing else, then just making sure other teams can't say, well, they gotta get somebody exactly. so you jump over them in the draft. Like that's the part that's surprising to me is they're not setting themselves up to not get jumped by someone. Which just makes me think that what? I'm just thinking maybe they want to be jumped. Maybe Jerry's like, oh, all the guards are gone. Receiver. <laughs> Sorry, we tried, but they took it. That's an interesting it's, strategy. <laughs> it's just, it is, it's, it's a departure from what they usually do. And you're right. Like, the price was high, but there were guys like, I would have, I would have bet my life. No, nah, I wouldn't have bet my life. I say that too often. <laughs> I'm not betting my life over what the Cowboys do in free agency. <laughs> no, that's, 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 not, that's not a good idea. Uh, 
But like Will for well uh, Will Hernandez, he signed with Arizona. Jermaine Fetty was another guy. They kind of fit the mold of like that guy who was kind of disappointing, but you could probably sign for less. And when that didn't happen, I was like, okay, I guess they're content to go into the draft. And and I think Nick's right. If they don't get what they need, then I think they'll sign that guy. But what concerns me about that is. Is is it going to match up with what they want or what they need? Like they are, are or are they going to draft some guy and then go sit up there and pat themselves on the back for what a good job they did when really they reached because they knew they needed a guard, right? And they're just hoping that we never find out about it. And he's got to play. And he's got to play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that, that's and exactly right. The two names to know are Zion Johnson out of Boston College and Kenyon Green out of Texas A and M. Those are the the guards, uh, Zion can play a little bit of center for what that's worth. But those are the guys that you would be drafting to fill that spot. And that's fine. I've heard there are even questions about them. Is that they are, Yeah, when you're picking well, yeah, 24. 24. I know, but, I'm t- but, but sometimes you can get a guard a little later because of how they're valued. And there may be a little less in the way of questions. But I heard there's some pretty interesting questions about both of them. Green, you know, Green didn't test great. His film, I mean, he's, he's had a fantastic college career. He's played four of the five positions on the line. Zion, I think people wonder about his strength, but he tested very well. But to your point, I think it's a lock that at least one of those guys has a second round grade, if not both. Yeah. And I'm, that's normal. Like that's normal yeah. when you're picking 24th, but the question comes in when somebody else will just use a receiver cuz that's the other position. Like if uh Jamison Williams or Chris Olave or Garrett Wilson or even Traylon Burks, like if if they have a better grade on that guy, and they draft the guard with the lesser grade because they need him, that's bad drafting. Exactly. Mm. And that's what that's would upset me, me. Yeah. which is also why they don't like they, – they're not going to let their graph na- grades be known because then they can tell us that Zion was the best guy on their board when it really wasn't true. Mm. Well, Jerry Jones, a few weeks ago, he did mention the fact that he is very open to trading, whether that's up or down. So that that is still a possibility. And now speaking about – I know you mentioned two names, but – about the talent itself, like if you were to dra- to trade up, are you specifically going to a guard and draft a guard, or is the talent okay if you wait until like let's say a second round guy? Because you ha- at this point we keep talking about it, you have to get some help at guard. Yeah, along that line, let me let me go back to the to the last part because I actually disagree. Now that I really think about it, I don't think it is bad drafting. At this point, I don't think dra- – I think if, if there was a receiver that's rated a little higher than the guard, I, I'm okay taking the guard. What about a lot higher? Well, I mean, I don't know. I, what that's I mean by that – and I know I mean, what you're saying, like a little bit. If they're fairly comparable, I agree with you. But what happens when – where is yeah. that mark of if you got a guy that – Use the CD Lamb example. Yeah, okay. And that's, that's fine. I mean, like a, a receiver you think is going to be in the top 10 and he falls yeah. down you know, or to 24. But – but to me, like, okay, you draft this guy. Like, if, if he's going to be better than CeeDee Lamb, then that makes sense. But if he's not going to be better than, than, like, Michael Gallup, he's probably your third receiver, like, is that good drafting to, to get a, a receiver that's higher rated? Let's say it's a Traylon Burks type of guy who's going to probably be your third receiver. Then what are you doing at guard? Are you still going with, Mag- with McGovern? I mean, I would rather have the guard that comes in and plays right away, even if he's not as good as my third receiver, because how does that guy help me? Okay, so let's, let's flip that a little bit then, because I, I, I understand what you're saying. But what if the talent there says he might not this year, right now he might be your third receiver, but in a year or two he might be your best receiver? Or let's even flip it to another position because I think receiver's a little bit of a different beast right yeah. now. Let's let's assume it's it's Stingley. He, by all accounts, he is a cornerback that will not be there for you. Mm-hmm. Let's assume he drops to you. Somebody with that kind of potential, would you be willing to do that knowing that Hey man, this might not pay off for us in the immediate, but it certainly can have big impact for us down the road. But we need a guard right now, which right? I, I to a degree I I agree with Nick, and yeah. and that to steal Brian Broadus's like terminology, like if the tags are touching, if you're basically talking yeah. about the same players that play different positions, take the guard, take the guard. It's the issue where a guy that is clearly a lot better than mm-hmm. the guard falls to you. Which, if if whatever we're hearing about this draft class is accurate, that's at least got a decent chance of happening. 
they yeah. they could be setting themselves up to do something really dumb, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's the thing. It goes it goes back to kind of what you just asked. Like like usually you want to say best available player, but they haven't they haven't afforded themselves that that luxury this year to do that. They have to go best available need, and um, <laughs> and that's that's where I. That's what I think that they are right now, and and but I've said this all along too is that like I think Dak is better, Zeke is better. These guys' offense is better if your offensive line is way better, and the best mm-hmm. way to do it is to draft you know and a plug and play guy, and that's it. It's just going to be hard to think any of these other players, the Stingley, the Jordan Davis, any of these receivers. That sounds great, but I'm like, man, they've got to get offensive line help. They've got to get a guy that can start. Do Which either one of those why, guards? Oh, go ahead. I just, I just, that's why I don't get what they did, and I don't get the lack of action in free agency yeah. to prevent that to from prevent being true. Because right. yeah. it is true. But why is it true? Why did they not do, like, why are they content to be like, man, I really hope Kenyon Green's there at 24? Because right. that's kind of what it feels like the strategy is. And are both those guys plug and play? They play. They freaking better be. No, well, I'm asking. I mean, that, yeah. Yes. yeah, it's yeah. nice to say they better be, yes. but you know, yes. yeah. both of them are plug and play. Yes, they're okay. gonna be. Yeah, but, right. but and also just know this: Zach Martin was picked 14th at guard. Quentin Nelson, I think, was sixth, fifth, yeah. maybe. Mm-hmm. Like, if you have a stud guard, you yeah, they can get, get picked yeah. up there. So when you say there's some, there's something wrong with their game. Well, yeah, that's why. That's why. Yeah, yeah, of course there is something. Uh, well, we, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We were going to take a break, but oh, I just, something else. I laughed when you said that earlier, which, you know, you could have a Zach Martin in this draft. So I say this kind of tongue in cheek, but like if they trade up for a guard, the draft Knicks, the people like me <laughs> who like really freak out about this stuff will burn Twitter down if they, <laughs> if they trade up for a guard to make sure they get their guard. Like if you're trading up in a first round of a draft. Doesn't it matter though how how no. much like you mean, if they trade up two spots you're gonna be like what the what did they give up I mean the, yeah. what did I mean what did they get in the Micah trade last year what did Philly give them to go up two spots in the first round a third yeah yeah you give up pick well, eighty eight well, to go get a guard you wouldn't, you mm. wouldn't do that twelve to ten and twenty four to I know. 22. I'm just it's probably a fourth uh, I'd I'd be you aggravated you, you by that fourth one of those fourth, one of those fourth round picks are supposed to do something one of those what about fifth round fifth round picks we got a lot of them. We're gonna talk that about hold that less. one. Okay. We're gonna talk about fifth round picks later in the show. Um, but uh, speaking of trade, and we're gonna go to break. I was just thought whatever trade it is, it better be better than what you got through Amari Cooper. A better deal, and it's a different deal, you know, different kind of trade. But you better get some well, some something better if, out of if, whatever if a, trade you make. If Amari Cooper can land you a fifth round pick, then I would trade one of those fifth round picks <laughs> to see if I can get something like that and his contract. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, Nick mentioned best available need. So I wanted to kind of dive a little bit deeper into that and see what are some of the other higher needs that the Cowboys have for this draft. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with... And I'm Jay Novacek, and we're both with... United United Ag Ag and Turf. Turf, the official tractor provider of the Dallas Cowboys. So, if you need a tractor to bale some hay, a mower to cut some grass, or a gator to get some chores done... Get a John Deere at United Ag and Turf. And then, let's get to work. Hey, Jay, that's my line. (laughs) Well, not today. Get to work with a John Deere tractor package that's just right for you and your budget. Visit UnitedAgandTurf.com. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like, where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day, where we are all defined by one single thing, the star, where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. At AT AT&T... Everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call. And teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone, new and existing customers, our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone. Even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. New Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. You deserve it. I do deserve that. 
you deserve decadent flavor without sugar. And a day at the beach without sand getting everywhere. And a relaxing bath that your children don't interrupt. I deserve all that? It's really just a visual metaphor for Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. Everything you want, nothing you don't. A visual metaphor on the radio. I do deserve that. Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. The zero you deserve is finally here. Back to the break. Head to the Star in Frisco for the 2022 Cowboys Draft, presented by Miller Lite. It's Thursday, April 28th through Saturday, April 30th. Enjoy live draft coverage, entertainment, free youth camp on Friday night, and the Draft Day 5K, presented by Baylor's Cotton White, on Saturday morning. For more details, visit DallasCowboys.com slash draft. Can we, can we, first of all, give Dave a little bit of a hand clap? He just completed a 10K. Uh, last week, if, if you had seen me at the finish it line, it doesn't matter. You, you finished it. Man. I would have made awesome. it to the finish line. That's awesome. That's, I appreciate. That. There are a lot of people that cannot do that. So nice. congratulations, nice. Thanks. Really thanks, good. So, everybody. are you guys running the five k? Anybody gonna? I would love to. They just doesn't. it's. I gotta be here to do day three coverage. Yeah, it's it's not, like it doesn't work out time wise. That's what I thought. It's kind of hard to do it unless you're gonna. The only thing I thought is maybe you could go and like shower and change in the. I'd have to shower there. and change at the gym yeah. and also. I'd have to get up super early after covering <laughs> day two until like part, 1 a.m. Yeah. 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 That I'll just pass. seems like something to, to say on the air. I did you know? it, yeah. Yeah, it just seems like, yeah. oh. I've been, been up since this morning doing a 5K. Why are we wow. just imitating Where, Kyle? Did, <laughs> oh, I was going to say, when did Brian get here? I was thinking, oh. Ooh. I think Kyle does want to run the 5K. And good for him. It yeah. wouldn't shock me. Yeah, he's, he's, he runs a little bit. Good virtually. for him. Yeah. <laughs> but congratulations, Dave. Good yeah, job. good job. Thanks. Thanks. All right, so before the break, um, Nick mentioned – that the Cowboys might be forcing themselves to see like best available need, Bam. and then Dave mentioned the Brian's line that you know if they're touching tags or whatever, and they're right there close to each other. So my question is, are there any other positions that might be kind of touching tags with the guard position well, as far I, as needs? Well, I, I you know I'll let Dave talk about it too, but I, I think receiver. The reason why it's up there is that there is a need there. Um, you know, because you don't know what Gallup's going to do this year, and James Washington is is still, you know, he's he's a lower round free agent guy that that's just supposed to be a band aid situation. So I, I think receiver because it's a need. I do think that that's would make more sense to you know to be in the conversation, but I don't think it's that much of a need. I think it's uh, I think it's one of the two or three biggest needs on the team, and I think I think the conversation comes down to that at twenty four. Just because of what might be there, and we have to acknowledge that you never know. We certainly weren't talking about CD Lamb in 2020. We were talking about Micah a little bit last year, but for the most part, everybody was fixated on cornerbacks. So, like, you don't know for sure. But when you just look at it, I think they need a they need an interior offensive lineman more than anything. I think receivers right after that. Then I would probably go edge rusher. Mm-hmm. Or you could flop those two if you want to. Whatever. Those are the top three, in my opinion. And then after that, probably offensive tackle and tight end. So when you look at those, there's going to be a guard there for you. There's going to be a receiver there for you. Offensive tackle would be pretty surprising just because of the value of that position. Uh, there isn't a tight end with a first-round grade. And what else did I say? Edge rusher. Possible, but again, that feels surprising picking 24th that one of those guys falls to you. So the natural conclusion is receiver and why can't I talk? Receiver and guard, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so I think when you're answering that question, you're talking about it 24. Yeah. Just because, yeah, for because, the first round. Because mm-hmm. it, not necessarily like those five positions should be your first five picks. You know, I don't think you're saying that because no, you can't predict that. Right, I mean, right. Because you could say though these would be needs to take in the first round, but I think if you're talking about the first three rounds, um, I'm thinking linebacker uh, has got to get in that mix because the more stability I've got at linebacker, then I can play Parsons where I want to play him. There you go. And I mean, Layton's a one-year one deal, and you know, after you know, who knows what else that happens at linebacker, and so. I just need a little bit more stability, more playmakers there. So I, I, I kind of put that in that group, not in the first round, I don't think, but no. in the but in the top, you know, first two days, yeah, maybe. I ironically put edge slash uh, linebacker because because of what you said, like it allows me some flexibility with with Micah if I get a linebacker. Uh, if I get it, I think an edge is important. 
But I also think if you get a linebacker, then that does offset that a little bit because you can slide Micah down to play edge a little bit more if you got a yeah. linebacker you think can play. Yeah. So so I think I think I put those together. But I think I would actually say that swing tackle to me is the third. It's behind guard and wide receiver. We've already talked about that. You're going to play some games this year sure. where you're going to need that guy, and that guy is not currently on the team. So I think I think you, oh well, I don't think he's currently on the team. Uh, so I think they 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 need to address that. I think the reason I fall off on tackle a little bit is just because I know that there are guys out there in free agency that like there are you know there, there's always yes, slide there's in. always like a 33 year old tackle who's just kind of chilling i mean if, i'm not saying they want to go re-sign Ty and Secchi, but they probably could yeah jason probably talk jason peters out of retirement or whatever the hell he's got going on so like i just think you can guys play forever you can address that cost effectively after the draft if it doesn't work out it's not to say i don't think they should draft one yep. can, can you get a linebacker that just plays a line Linebacker, no one thinks he's a pass rusher, and then he gets a week two of the season and find out that he's a really good pass rusher. Can he get that guy? Yeah, I think that would be fun. Sure, I agree. right right after you get Zach, <laughs> right after you get Zach Martin, and I yeah. think you can get that guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's just amazing when you when you really think about what happened with Parsons. Like Man. if it, I mean the COVID year, there's not a lot of great things that happen that 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 came out of COVID. Yeah. But that right there, we just don't, and I'm again, I'm I'm, being, I'm just being tongue in cheek here. I understand that it was a, it was a huge deal for our whole world and country and all that, and a lot of people lost their lives. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this feels even gross to put it in the same sentence. But like the fact that that he didn't play, you know, he opted out for whatever the reasons, opted out. That allowed him to be, you know, to fall to twelve. And I don't. I think if he would have played that year, they would have realized this guy can rush the passer, and he would have been drafted third. His coaches at Penn State have said they were going to put more on his plate uh, if he had played. Uh. And that's if you go back, I'll, I'll I'll readily own it. Like I wanted one of the cornerbacks, and there was a lot of concern. Everybody did. Let's be honest. My there were some people out there that will. Let's be honest. The Cowboys probably sure. no no not. I mean, but think, for the fact that I they think, both got taken, I think Mickey and I can. No, can raise there, our hand on this one. That, there were that we plenty of like people him better, better that than wanted the yes. No, that it's on can, this show. Yeah. We, we pulled the, we All pulled right. the clip the other day. You All can right. go back and find it. There All are right. people out there, but my like but I don't feel bad about it because the whole thing was positional value. Is like is this guy going to do more than play off ball linebacker? Turns out, yeah. And he's really good at it. And if there had been tape of that, yeah, he would have been a top five pick. And I remember saying, I, the way he the way he rushes up the middle, I remember think I remember saying this like it's not always going to be against Purdue and he gets Indiana. Like I get it, the guards are a lot better, um, but but that, <laughs> so? that's that's what's scary about people like me that cover the draft. And I don't cover is very loosely there. I look at highlight tapes. Well, no one puts out you know Nicobe Dean's plays that suck. Like the, no one puts that on Twitter, uh, on YouTube. They put his highlight tapes, and his highlight tapes look good. But they're watching film on guys, good and bad. What's what he can do? Is what he can't do? So it's it's real scary to go. Well, I, I love what this guy does at receiver. Like okay, but he misses. He runs bad routes sometimes, and that's why he's not this or that. So you got to be careful just on what you see on highlights because it it goes both ways. Going back to the linebacker thing, I would like them to draft one but and maybe i'm maybe i'm listening too much to stephen jones like maybe i should be more not take him at his word but like we asked him about linebacker in florida and he was like well you got to remember J ron's basically a linebacker and i was like yeah that's a good point and if you but are they going to pull him down to that and have another strong safety in in those situations like it, like I, you can't well, can double, double count him. Like I, I think when they're in nickel, typically he's still on the field and, at safety, right? But he comes down into the box right. and deals with the tight end. So all in, for all intents and purposes, like he's not back in coverage. He's down doing. But you're still going to need two linebackers. Yeah. Is my point. And yeah. But so, but when you factor in those three, like Leighton Van Der Esch and Jabril Cox can play nickel linebackers. Basically, what I'm saying, Got if you want to do, if you want Micah to do something else, or okay. Micah can obviously play nickel linebacker too i just think if you include curse and say that you've got those four i feel okay about it i'm not saying like sure draft one that would be great but i got one i have it lower on my i on got my one list and, of needs. and it would be your guy damone clark mm. why 
<laughs> he had spinal fusion surgery and is going to miss his rookie season. Ooh. Yeah. No, well, I feel terrible for him. Yeah, that's he'd, not good. He'd be a top. He would be. Yeah, a I don't want him then. Top 100 pick. <laughs> so. I Are there any linebackers in this draft He's that you would 18. be like, if they got him at that 24, you'd be like, yeah, I get it. I understand. Hey, somebody somebody no, stopped no. me well, on, walking into the to the office like a month ago. Some some fan, he was just like, what do you think? And he said it so fast, I don't even know what he was saying. And, of course, it was you know 9 in the morning. I don't yeah. know anything. He was just like, what do you think about Chad Muma? And I was like, what? He was like talking about Chad Muma from Wyoming. I love the idea of you being accosted about Chad Muma at 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, what was funny. Did you, can you guess the look on Nick's no, face, too? Like, no, no. I, it took about, me a second. To, but what, here's, what, here's what was really kind of funny about it. So he's he's like, he's a he's a big time fan and he was up in the Cowboys club and with his wife and his wife was like don't don't harass this guy and he was just like no I listen to the show all the time he's probably listening he's like second round pick what do you think about him in the second round and as he's saying that I look over and I see Darren Woodson who works on the other side of this building he's got a real estate company and all that he's killing it he's walking with like a client or whatever and so I said well you know, loudly you know you know how the second round picks go. You never know about a second round pick and all that. And then, of course, he was like, see, there you go. That's why we're not friends and all this stuff, which I had to remind him. There's a huge picture in my office about him. So, um, But anyways, second round pick, Chad. You love Luma. saying that. What? That you have a picture of him in your office. Because he loves Every talking. time he sees Darren, he mentions Darren... it again. I'm like, okay, just <laughs> are you in love with the guy? Like, like you always mention. Maybe. I mean, I love like <laughs> him. No, so. Maybe. No, he's, he's great, but it's always like, he's, Darren, yeah. I have a, a picture of you on my desk. Well, he's always office. talking shih tzu all the time. So, uh, you know. T- so, when he does, I mean, I just have to remind him that. You know, I don't think uh, my picture's on his office wall. So, the guy didn't Maybe. care Maybe too not. much about Darren. Yeah, he, he paid didn't attention. Go I, I, it was kind of more what you're of a, trying to do. You're trying to push him off on Darren. Yeah, like, go hey, get, there's a ho- go get the future picture. Hall of Famer. Maybe like go like, go hang out yeah, with him. Okay, cool. Chad Muma though. <laughs> yeah, what, about Muma? Chad Muma? what about him? <laughs> good player. You even recognize Darren? What do you think about this guy? He's a good player. I, I mean, I don't. I don't take notes on all 500 of these guys the way that Brian does. I know a lot of people think really highly of him. He played at Wyoming. Mm-hmm. I think Logan Wilson could have won Super Bowl MVP, so I think a lot of people have Wyoming in the back of their mind. Uh, Maybe Josh Allen, too. So, well, I'm just thinking about linebacker. linebacker oh. But, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, like, he's going to be a top 100 pick. Um, okay. No, I was going to say, no, to answer your question, um, there's not a linebacker that they could pick at 24 that would thrill me just because of the investment they've yeah. already made. It's and the same argument you had last year about Micah, right? Like just for the the value yeah. of the pick, it, you would be well, and with. and and like you have Micah and you just drafted Cox. It's like, well, gee, I mean, we gotta what we're we gonna do with all these guys? And <laughs> on top of that, so there, I mean. Nicobe Dean's one of my favorite players in this yeah, draft. Love it. They they ain't drafted him. He's five. You don't think he's gonna be there, or he's no, just doesn't fit. I think he's gonna. He's five eleven. They don't draft five eleven guys. They like big long guys. They like Leighton Van Der Esch and Micah Parsons. Yeah. Devin Lloyd. Mm. I think a lot of people are gonna try to sell Devin Lloyd as this year's Parsons because he had eight sacks at Utah last year. He can do a little bit of that, but the freakish athleticism just isn't there. Like he's lighter than Micah. And also slower and less explosive. Reminds like, me of Derek Johnson from UT. Devin Lloyd. I remember Devin. Yeah, Derek. Devin Lloyd. Because he's got the football in his hand every time. Every time you look at it. He's got four <laughs> that picks. That guy was his. a football magnet. Yeah. yeah. He's definitely, I, don't mistake me, he's definitely a good player, but I don't, not so good that I think it's worth drafting him 24th overall. No, I agree. It's when you just be, drafted Micah. It's, it's yeah. got to be a guard or just a, a playmaking receiver that you just can't mm-hmm. you you just can't those are only two, I mean like you guys w- would you would you consider cornerback if you if the right one fell to you in the first round yes. like so so that's what I'm trying to get and I think that's where Amber was going like what are the positions where you like this this make this would make sense if the right guy's there here are some names but you wouldn't be punching a wall like actually right. you yeah. take that but you also have to ask the question why is he falling you have to ask absolutely. that question yeah, absolutely absolutely I, I mean that's that's fair but I don't know that anybody was asking that question about CD. You just sort of like, he's here, get him. Right. We you actually, know? we've got, we should have put Zion on the cover of our draft magazine. That's yeah. my one regret. But yeah. I got a few. Well, these three, these three are all names that I think you should know in terms of like, not a receiver, not a guard, but somebody they should consider. We all know Tyler Linderbaum, yep. best center in the draft. 
I I want like it's so weird to me that they didn't bring him in. Like I think that's so weird. Like it what does that mean that like why don't you I don't know, why don't you want to do some due diligence Is that on that? Maybe the guy that maybe they're that's who they got circled, that's maybe. who they want. They just don't want to put anybody on the scent. I don't think they would draft Trent. It cool. <laughs> yeah, just kinda, you know, we don't we're cool, we're good, we got a center. I don't think they would draft Trent McDuffie. Um but I think he should be in consideration. He's five ten. Dude's a baller. Do you write like, a story on him? Today? Yeah, he's our he's our story for today. I mainly I wanted him on the cover because I just think the purple, purple. kind of pops. Yeah. yeah, it does. But like he's a purple always pops. Freaking great yeah. football player. Like he's a shutdown corner. He can play slot and outside. I just wonder if he's got enough length. But maybe if he falls all the way to twenty four, maybe you consider it. And then yeah. there's George Karloftis who is. Just a badass, the badass edge rusher from Purdue. Um, he's not like he's not this physical freak, but he's like a very athletic, high motor guy. And if you need an edge rusher, again, athletic and high motor. Yeah, I mean, but he's not like he's not like an athletic super freak, is what I'm trying to say. But like he's an athletic edge. Um, he shouldn't be there at 24, but maybe he will be. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. So I mean, that's, are, that's what y'all. Every every one of the draft people that I listen to all are saying the same thing. It's going to be a crapshoot. You get past the top, what, five, six, seven picks, and it's really just your flavor. What do you want? The funny thing, though, is like even still, so much of the draft industry is groupthink because it's it's scary to kind of be out on your own with an yeah. opinion. And so you still kind of find people falling into this group thought process where it's like, ah, he'll, he'll be gone. He'll be gone. He ain't falling. It's like somebody's got to. And yeah. then for all you know, this – some guy that we've universally got pegged as getting picked in the 20s could go in the teens. Yeah. The na- I'll never forget uh, Cleland Farrell, mm-hmm. defensive lineman out of Clemson, was like we widely had him circled as like somewhere between 20 and 40. He went fourth overall. Thanks, Mike. How's he, how he, how he done? It hasn't worked out. <laughs> That's not well, the point, though. I, I know. One, I know. I'm just. I'm but just I got wondering. one that yeah. did, and he's I think a Hall of Famer. And this goes to show how long we've been doing this. But Dwight Freeney was mm. not supposed to go in no. the top ten or whatever to the Colts, and that was one that it was like who, you know, and then not not who because he was probably a late first round pick. Well, it was probably but, also his size. Like that that yeah. was always the knock on him is his size, but he played <laughs> well beyond that. Yeah, so, between. But I think that always happens. I feel like in every draft, you you're watching the TV and you're looking and you're expecting a team to do something, and then all of a sudden they pick a guy that you're like, wait, what, what? And mm-hmm. then you, and we saw it happen a lot last year, and was yeah. it last year mainly? That's yeah, that it, right. that it was <laughs> a lot that you're like, whoa, what? And that's clearly how CD Lamb and landed on yeah, your lap because and that's and that we say this all the time but like these guys that are that are doing this I mean I, I think Dane Brugler does an amazing job of dry, you know he's got this beast of a of a of a book with all these players but you know it it's done universally it's not he's not ranking the corners based off of length and and size and what Dan Quinn would want he's he's trying to put it all out there on everything involved when he might Dan Quinn might look at it and go, well, his number fourteen corner is my number two corner yep. because he'll come right in and, and, do, Sean Wright. and do what this guy. <laughs> I mean, does. like yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and that's and that's and that's not, that's not a knock on any of these draft experts. They they can only do it that way. Yeah. That's why this stuff happens. There's a receiver out there that, that that'll be a perfect slot guy for what the offense is trying to do for some team that is probably the number twenty five receiver on the board, but he might yep. go in the second round. Yep. Well, let me change the conversation a little bit. We've talked a lot about the the first two rounds and you know what they're gonna do on day one and those top picks, but we haven't really gotten into those later rounds on like day late day two late uh, and day, day three. three, you know. And we give the Cowboys, Will McClay and his staff, a lot of credit of the amazing job that they usually do when it comes to drafting talent, but. Looking at this list over here, as far as the fifth round pick, uh, I mean, yeah. Well, they got four fifth rounders. That's what we keep talking about. Yeah. Everything is like, yeah. well, they kicker, just fifth round. What about a <laughs> running back? Fifth, oh, round. fifth round. <laughs> yeah. I think the point she's about to make though is that the track record is <laughs> tight. No muy bueno. No muy bueno. Ibel. Can we drop the names? <laughs> so I'm gonna drop some names. Okay, I'm gonna go. down for go from most recent to later down the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, Semi Fihoko, Bradley and I, Michael Jackson, Joe Jackson, Mike White, Jackson Ryan Fihoko. Russell, Devin Street, Joseph Randall, Danny Cole, Josh 
Thomas, D'Angelo Smith, and then a few more down the lo- the road, you got Orlando St- Skandrick, which was one that he did that stay here for, for a while. Skandrick the last good fifth-round yes. pick? Yeah. 2008. Oh is he the only? Like, I didn't hear any names in there that just jumped at me. I mean, that, the, yeah, ironically, the, the funny thing is if you go and look at sixth and seventh rounders, they've been better in the mm-hmm. sixth and seventh round yeah. than they've been in the fifth round. No, so I'm, that's the been, question. What do yeah. they do? Yeah, the that, that, that's the thing. Like, everyone keeps kind of – there's like this little, you know, you know, growing excitement about, well, they got four in the fifth round. Yeah. I think the excitement is if you do something with them. If you trade it for something else or you package it to get a better fourth or a third or something like that. Because just sitting there and taking four fifth rounders – Seems like a waste. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. I, that's why, and like, again, draft Knicks can get into all these arguments about like the value. I would use the first pick of the fifth round on the kicker that John Fossil likes the best. Yep. I would be excited if it was Cade York. I don't really care what they Just think. They can kick. Just draft a kicker. Yep. Who cares? Like, the odds are that whoever you draft isn't going to make the team anyway. Right. Or, it, well, excuse me, he'll make the team. He just won't do anything. Yeah. Just would get a good kicker. Would the first time that you would e- ever, like, that the Cowboys would have used a, a draft pick? On a kicker? On a kicker? That's well, a Well, there's question. one on their list there, but um, David Beeler. Oh, yeah, you have it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but he wasn't even supposed to be, like, the kicker. He, he was... It that was, was in such... 2009. And even, like, even if he sucks, like, even if the kicker's not that... Like, I mean... The track record, I think we talked about this, like the track record of of picks being used on kickers is pretty damn good. Like mm-hmm. both of the pro bowlers this year were drafted. Um, Evan McPherson, who was a huge part of the Bengals yep. run, was a fifth round pick. Like if a kicker's good enough to get drafted, he's usually pretty good. Like there are always the exceptions like Aguayo. That's Tampa's fault. Now, And that was a weird situation. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're not doing it. It's such a mental position. You're not yeah. doing a kicker any favors by trading up for him in the second round, in my yeah. opinion. Um, but yeah, just draft the guy you like the best. And even if he sucks, well, all your other fifth round picks do too. So who cares? Yeah. Like you're back where you started. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, it, it, I don't know what, what the strategy has been there. I mean, I don't know if there is a theme to those guys other than KP. Um, I just they haven't they haven't stuck, you know and. I mean, Joseph Randall was a pretty good player, but yeah. he obviously yeah, had, issues had other issues. The yeah. field, a lot of issues, but yeah. uh, he—I mean, talent-wise, that was a good—that was a good player. Yeah. But like Devin Street, I mean, Ryan Russell, those guys just couldn't. And even like the most recent ones in like the past uh, five years, these are names that we've talked about he- on, mm-hmm. on here, and you're like, okay, I can see it, but then it it just you never just really doesn't. get much out of it, and never leads to anything really. Who, I, who are the three after an I? Like uh, Joe uh, Jackson, Michael Jackson, and Mike, Mike White. White. Which Mike White? I mean, Mike White wound up being worth it just for another team after yeah. they cut him. I mean, if I had told you, true, yeah. if I had told you that he would have wound up starting a few games and won a regular season game for you, which he did for the Jets last year, mm-hmm. yeah, against the Super Bowl runner-up. God, the NFL is such a weird <laughs> league. So crazy. Uh, that would be worth it. It's just it just didn't happen here, which yeah. sucks. Which, by the way, when you're talking about that round, uh, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh round picks, like. I don't think of that as they have to be great here. Like if they keep playing, to me that means you got a pick, you got a good pick there, and maybe they didn't There's work one. for you long term. But they, it doesn't that's make you feel any better. No, but but it does make you feel better from a standpoint of the evaluation the was right. The, <laughs> the evaluation was right. Yeah, I mean <laughs> Xavier, Xavier Woods to me is a good example of that. Xavier Woods is still playing football. Yeah, and and so as a sixth round pick to still be playing football, that's a good pick. If Xavier Woods had never played another down after his contract ended here, he would have been a great pick mm. that's True. yeah that like i get I, I get frustrated sometimes because of like the way people evaluate this stuff like if you find and obviously his tenure here did not end well the comments he made <laughs> about hustling will forever be remembered but yeah. like for what you got out of him at a, as pick like 198 or something yeah. like that if you call that a disappointing pick, you're just telling me you don't understand the draft. That's all you're saying to okay, me. That's a great pick on in the sixth list. round. Same thing. We give Noah Brown a lot of crap, but Noah Brown was that's, 239. That's yeah. my guy like forever. That, that's just a, making that's a it work good pick. year okay. after year <laughs> but, after but year. That list has games played on there, and and you know 30, 35, you know 48 games played is like three seasons. Mm-hmm. I bet you only Scandrick. 
Only Skandrick, I think, is the only guy that goes over 40 games played, and maybe mm. Josh Thomas. No, there are there are a couple. So Orlando Skandrick played 143 games, yeah, and he started 77. Yeah. Um, as far as other like start starts, you have Sean Ryan. He started 15 and he played 53 games. Pat Watkins, he played 53 games. That's pretty good. That's pretty and good. then the other one that's up there, too, is Josh Thomas. And that did not happen here. Year. That happened in Carolina. Oh, that was I don't think. Yeah, well, I mean, that's just a total stat. In general, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't even remember Sean Ryan starting I don't 50 games. But 50, tight end, yeah, that was like you started off in the two tight end set. I mean, he was not a starter. Ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, look at the, the last four. I mean, obviously no starts there with those last four, but – the highest one was Joe Jackson with 20 games that he played. Yeah, he was a special teams guy. You know, that's all he was. Um, I didn't think he's still in the league, Joe Jackson. I don't think so. I, I will. I will say this though, and like again, your expectations should go down the later you get on day three. But going back to what we said about what Rob said, talking about Connor Williams last week, is like when this is your strategy, like when you invest this much in the draft. You need to hit on some of these. Like you can't just be like, "Well, what are you going to do? It's the fifth round." Uh, it's like, no, it's true. This you're is right. how you're choosing to bring talent into your team. And so many people want to talk about the Rams and what they're doing. A big part of the reason why they can get away with that is they're actually great on day three of the draft. Like I'm, I'm for for all intents and purposes. Like obviously, not every pick is going to hit, but like Obo Okrawanko, uh, Sebastian Day. Um, Who's the uh, who's the safety? Jordan Fuller, the guy who made the play on CD in Week One in 2020, sixth round pick. Like they're mm-hmm. getting starters on day three, year in and year out. They're finding guys that can contribute. I do think the Cowboys could stand to be Cooper a little Cobb, bit better. Let's, let well, he's third round. I think third round? that's I think that's a little but more a of an third investment. Round, third round to get the best receiver in the league. Yeah, yeah, oh, well, that's sure. a, that's a heck of a pick. Yeah, I mean, yeah pick. absolutely, it's a great. Samson pick, Ekubom, who's been a part of their pass rush, it felt like he was part of their pass rush forever. Was a fourth round pick. Like they, uh, Note Boom, Cody, uh, Note Boom, Cody, is it Weichman or Wickman? I don't remember, but they found him in the sixth round. Um, they're good. The, the you Cowboys, can find starters the on Cowboys day three. Have done pretty good at sixth and seventh round. Which is just the ironic part is the fifth it round just, has been yeah, so terrible, yeah. and this is the year that they're sitting with four. Yeah. Usually, it takes us several years for you to be able to categorize how well the draft went for the Cowboys yeah. and all that. But if you had to, like, after we're done with the draft and looking at it, if you had to say for this year, what would you call a good draft? That it turned out well for the Cowboys. What would they need to do in this specific draft to say right away before heading into the preseason that this was a good draft? They heading into two, preseason? When they you, need two guys, two guys that, that, start. That, that start this year. So with two Absolutely. guys that start for sure. That would be, that'd be great. Heading yeah. into preseason? Yeah. Two that that seems, that two seems bona fide starters that, and yeah. a third that has a clearly defined role yeah. somewhere. The way that's probably going to happen is if they get a – a wide receiver probably in the first round and then get the guard in the second. It can happen the other way too, right? It like they could. could go a guard in the first round and then get a I mean this wide receiver right. class is supposed to be pretty deep, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean he could yeah, could the receiver be better than James yeah. Washington and Michael yeah. Gallup's not ready? Yeah. Yeah, yeah th- that could happen. So guard receiver. Guard receiver I think if they, if that's probably. your first two picks, the hope is that they're both gonna be playing week one this of this year. season because they're gonna have to. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> probably <laughs> Will the could, draft gods be that kind to them? Could, like could that you, a guy that's good question. enough? Could you draft a second available. round offensive tackle and he's better than Terrence Steele? I mean that could that possible. not happen? It's I mean, possible. I mean Terrence Steele. I mean like, they're they're putting the eggs in that basket, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's. he's yeah, when I mention swing tackle, the fact is that swing tackle's coming in here, and if he's a young draft pick. He's competing with Terrence Steele to, to be a starter. Yeah. yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my that's mind, one of, anyway. well, that's one of those things where I wonder. You know, the coaches are like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like yeah. Terrence Steele all He's day, guy. every yeah. day, unless that's unless we wind like up that, with that's Charles exactly, Cross. That's, that's exactly why I said that's in my mind because my mind may be very different. But yeah, I mean. Tyler Smith out of Tulsa, if he's hanging around in the second round. Abraham Lucas out of Washington State. Um, I, I, tackles like edge rusher though, like mm-hmm. the good ones go mm-hmm. pretty quick. Like great ones aren't usually hanging around yeah. by yeah. fifty six, and certainly not eighty eight. Yep, yep. So we'll see. We shall see, right. and we're we're almost done. We will have a, another show right before the draft, which is 
draft Thursday, and we'll have a show on Wednesday. And Derek? Let's go get a snack. <laughs> You're ready to go eat. You okay, Rex eat. Ryan. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's start. All right, let's well, go. guys, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us live and on demand later on. For Nikki Man, Derek Eagleton. I have to do this slow. This is like a tongue twister it for is. me. Every for week. Nikki Man, for Derek Eagleton, David Hellman, and Amber Garcia, this has been The Break on DallasCowboys.com radio. 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 <laughs> This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!